Hey everybody, welcome back to Winnemag Hockey, where today we are continuing our off-season analysis series, and today we are talking about the one, the only, Philadelphia Flyers. If you're new to the channel, my name is Dom the Bomb, and I am joined, as always, by Jake the Snake Armstrong and Matt the Brat Cleveland. Please consider hitting that subscribe button for more NHL and street hockey content. Let's get into the video. All right, everybody, so today, as I said, we are talking about the Philadelphia Flyers and recapping on what they were able to accomplish this past season and what they did this offseason, and we're going to look ahead into next season as well. So this past season, Philly went 25, 23, and 8 for 58 points, which missed a playoff spot, but they had a winning record, so there is some, some good and bad with that. Uh, and also the story that we all know of, goaltending and we'll get to that part as well but first let's look at the bright side and talk about the new players and personnel that have come into the locker room jake take it away all right so that was a whirlwind of an off season for the flyers a bunch of new faces uh starting with uh well we'll talk about who they lost in the expansion draft with uh carson twarinski they even left shane gosh's bear exposed then and the Kraken didn't bite on it. I personally think that Gosh Despair has more value than just giving him away for nothing. But uh, the Flyers didn't, because soon after that, they traded Shane Gosh Despair and a 2022 second and seventh to the Arizona Coyotes for nothing. Absolutely nothing came back from that. Uh, so good trade for the Coyotes. Flyers, if you really needed that cap space, good for you, I guess. Uh, they went on to acquire Rasmus Ristolainen, for Robert Hag, a 2021 first and a 2023 second round pick. So they filled that defensive slot. But they weren't done filling their defense there because they also acquired Ryan Ellis and Philip Myers for Nolan Patrick. So Nolan Patrick didn't really pan out in his first few seasons in Philly. Uh, he was drafted number two overall. So that's a, a significant loss, in my opinion. You definitely expect more out of a second overall pick. Uh, but they also acquired um, Cam Atkinson for Jacob Voracek, a longtime uh, flyer. So that's a pretty significant trade. Atkinson, also a longtime Blue Jacket. So I don't think anyone saw that one coming. Uh, some significant signings they made were Derek Broussard and Keith Yandel. So they really just filled out that lineup. Yeah, it seems like they also gave up a good bit of draft capital, which we'll have to see how that pans out in the future. But Matt, let's talk about some of this, uh, some of the acquisitions and losses here. Who sticks out to you and who do you think is going to have a big impact? Well, I mean, they definitely brought in a lot of money. I mean, when you're bringing in dudes like Cam Atkinson, obviously Warshak was getting paid a lot, but Cam Atkinson, 5.8 over 4. And you got dudes like Ryan Ellis making 6.2 over 6. I mean, you're bringing dudes in who's making a lot of money, which is going to kind of hinder what they can do in the future. But I think for now, players like Ryan Ellis and players like Cam Atkinson, I think they're huge additions to this team. Cam Atkinson kind of going to fill the Jakob Voracek role, I think, to a bigger extent, because I think he's a little better defensively. And Ryan Ellis is obviously a shutdown defender. He was there in Nashville, and I think he's going to do the same thing here in Philly. Jake, so you... You had a list there to talk about. What are your thoughts on some of those acquisitions? Uh, like I said, I think losing Nolan Patrick could be a big deal if he does find his footing. But bringing in Cam Atkinson is nothing to look over. He was a 40-goal scorer a few years ago, and that was even before Panarin came in. Like He wasn't playing with the highest quality players, but he put up 40 goals. If he can get his game back in Philly, that's going to be a solid top-line winger for them. Uh, Ristolainen was okay in Buffalo. He tends to have a super bad plus or minus every year, but he was playing in Buffalo, so you kind of wave that off. Uh, I think they definitely gave away a lot of futures, which is questionable because they are in a tough division and a tough conference. So they're going to be getting high picks, and they just gave those away. So if this doesn't pan out, then they could be in trouble. Yeah, and let's not forget to mention the cap situation. They have under a million dollars in cap space and with some of those contracts you were talking about it's not looking like it's going to get any better for them to make a whole lot of other moves 
unless they do a lot more trading like they did this offseason. But that's not very typical for teams to do, uh, to sit there and trade a bunch of players every offseason. So, Jake, with that, how do you think they're going to handle the cap situation moving forward? Do you see them losing any uh, any more key guys? Uh, well, I mean, they're going to have a bunch of uh, additional cap coming on next year as they gave Sean Couturier a much larger contract. Uh, they gave Joel Farabee $5 million for the next million years. Uh, they just added a bunch of guys. And honestly, the only way out of the situation to me is you have to let Claude Giroux walk. I don't know any other way around it. They made it clear that they don't care about the old guard. They got rid of Voracek, and I think Claude Giroux is the next one out the door. Matt, what do you think about that? Do you think Giroux is, is going to be out of there soon? Yeah, I think there's just so many question marks with this roster, and uh, to keep a guy like Claude Giroux just wouldn't make sense. I mean, when you're looking at it, you don't even know if you're going to have solid goaltending going into next year. So why would you look to compete? Why would you look to continue to compete and keep the old guard back, uh, like Jake said, if like if it doesn't even look like you're going to be able to play well? So I think at that point, he's definitely looks like one of the guys who's going to be on the way out. I think some of the other dudes in the back end might be on the way out as well, but. It's going to be interesting. They have a lot of dudes making a lot of money, and they're in a very tight situation. They put themselves in themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. However, on a brighter note, I will say, uh, and you guys will probably agree with me uh, on this, if you're a Philly fan, you've got to be somewhat excited about these moves that your GM is out there making. Like, It seems like that he really wants to win, and he wants to win now, whether that's for the best for this franchise moving forward. We'll have to see. But... Uh, if you're a Philly fan, would you guys be excited too, or would you be kind of scratching your head at some of this? Uh, Jake, I'll come but like, you. Yeah, like you said earlier, they had a winning record last year, but I don't think any fan wants to watch their team be mediocre and sit middle of the pack. So their GM went out and he said, I want to make this team better right now, and I want to compete. So I think if you're a Flyers fan, you have to be happy about that. Even if it backfires, he tried something and you're not going to be a mediocre team. Mm -hmm. Matt, what are your thoughts? I I mean, I'm with you on the point to where if he succeeds, it'll work out, and he's. I do commend their GM for taking a risk, but I feel like if this doesn't succeed, they're screwed. Just with their situation, players like Kevin Hayes making 7 mil doesn't help. Just the, like all the situations they put themselves in. It's not the fact that people are making a lot of money. It's the fact that people are making a lot of money over four, five, six years. That like if this doesn't work out, there's really not many options they can go and try and change it. They have been signing a lot of contracts with a lot of term. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so maybe they will have to trade down the line to make things work. Uh, we'll have to see. But Matt, you alluded to this earlier, and I also mentioned something earlier about the goaltending over in Philadelphia. Not last season, but the season before, Hart was spectacular, playing out of his mind, and this year he struggled significantly. Um, the, his numbers were not great at all. They were atrocious. Uh, do you think he's going to rebound, or do you think that the days of Carter Hart that we thought were going to be great are no longer going to be? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I think they're trying to make it in the right direction. I mean, they fired one of their assistant coaches who I'm pretty sure handled their goal, goaltending situation. They brought in a new guy, so we'll see what he does. But uh, really, I mean, Carter Hart had such a great season, like you alluded to, in 2019. For him to fall off a cliff like that in 2020, I, I don't know if it's like an undisclosed injury they're not talking about or something, but it was just... Weird. He looked like he was one of those dudes who'd be like the next Vasilevsky with the way he was playing in it. Like, then all of a sudden in 2020, he just fell off a cliff. I think he definitely has the talent. He showed that. Mm -hmm. It's just about getting him, getting him in right situations, getting his mind right again. Because if he's confident again, he can be a great goaltender. That's what they got to get him back to. Yeah, I think that the situation is definitely going to be. Uh, something interesting. I really hope people aren't blaming him for his off season or how he takes care of his body because it just seems like that wouldn't be the case for someone with such a promising career. Jake, what do you think about it? Uh, well, uh, I'm going to have to jump ahead of you here. Uh, I have Carter Hart being the Flyers' star player next season. Okay. I think that he, 
a couple seasons ago, you said it, he was great. He was the reason the Flyers were doing well. I don't think it's fair to assume that having one down year is the end of the end of it for him. Uh, I think you look at his uh, 0.917 in 2018-19, 0.914 in 2019-20, he fell off a lot. He was not good last year. I don't think we can work around that. But immediately as he started to slip off, the media picked up on that and there were memes made about him and he sees that. And that's why I think they went after a guy like Martin Jones to be the backup. He's someone else who was phenomenal at one point in his career and fell off and became the laughing stock. So mm -hmm. I think that someone like him to explain to Carter Hart, like, hey, this is how you push off the media. You just have to focus on you and this is how you become better. I think that that's great for him and it's going to help him bounce back. And for the league's sake and for his sake, I hope that's the case. And for Philly fans too. This is such a young guy that showed incredible incredible potential and Jake I think you're right I don't think one season is enough to say that he's not going to be a good goaltender I think that he's still going to have uh, a good opportunity to shine over there uh, Matt do you think that Carter Hart is going to bounce back and do you think uh, or I'm sorry and who do you think is going to be the best player for Philly next season since Jake gave us his well, I think they're going to need him to bounce back. I will say that, and I agree with Jake. He he has the potential to be a very, very good goaltender. Um, with uh, the bringing in the Martin Jones situation, it's kind of weird. You brought in the same exact guy who's pretty much gone through the same exact situation like Jake alluded to, but I don't think you really ever had a bounce back, so I don't know how Martin Jones is going to be able to help him out. When Martin Jones himself has really not had a bounce back, so I think both of them are going to have to go through a little bit of a resurgence and try to find a way to up the goaltending here in Philly and with that in mind they're going to need a lot of scoring help and that's why I think their best player I think is a the guy they traded Jakob Voracek one of their top players for Cam Atkinson I think he's a really good player he was an amazing player there in uh, the Blue Jackets I think he was uh, for the Blue Jackets he's extremely underrated he's coming off a season where he had 15 goals 19 assists for 34 points in 56 games which isn't great for the amount of money that he's making but I think with him with a bigger role, and the Blue Jackets roll their lines more than a team like Philly probably will. So uh, I think with that situation, Cam Atkinson is going to have the chance to play a lot more minutes. And he's going to be able to contribute more. And I think he's going to be a guy who's going to play well on that top line. Yeah, I definitely agree with you. I think Cam Atkinson, uh, he's, like you said, he's been underrated for such a long time. And I think over there in Philly, I think he's just going to continue to get better. Jake, what are your thoughts on Atkinson and his new home there in uh, Philadelphia? I agree 100% that he is a very underrated player. And that started when Panarin made his way to the Blue Jackets. He became the star of the team. And then because he was the more flashy forward, Atkinson kind of got pushed to the, the shadow. Uh, so I think he's going to enjoy more of the spotlight in Philly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so with that, talking about the acquisitions, their situation moving forward, it seems like that they really are trying to push for the playoffs right now and for that Stanley Cup, do you guys think that this roster is going to be able to get them into the playoffs? And if so, how far do you think they could potentially go? Matt, I'll start with you. Well, the Metro is always a bloodbath. You always have the two blue bloods on the top there. Uh, Pittsburgh's always going to be around their state rival. And then obviously Washington's always going to be around with the likes of Ovechkin leading that team. So, uh, I don't see – if they do make the playoffs, I don't think they're winning the division. A lot of people – I've seen some people uh, projecting the winning division. I just don't see that happening. I think there's too much talent in this division. Uh, if they're going to make it in, it's going to be in like a third-place spot, and they're going to have to play somebody on the road in like a game six, game seven situation. And I don't know if they're going to be able to come back from that. I don't think they're going to be Stanley Cup contenders this year. But I think there is a chance. If they can get their guys running at 100% again, a la Carter Hart, I think they can make the playoffs. Mm -hmm. Jake, how about you? I am not as confident. I think that they made all the right moves. I think they're a good team. I just think the Metro is too good. And now that we're going back to the, the regular wild card format of the playoffs, uh, I honestly think the Metro might only take three spots. The Atlantic is just that good. And so it's going to come down to Philly and Pittsburgh for that last spot in the Metro. And Sidney Crosby isn't going to be someone who's going to miss the playoffs that easily. So they're going to have their work cut out for them. Mm -hmm. I also want to mention that the Rangers 
played well and finished ahead of Philly this year. So keep that in mind as well, that Metro is definitely competitive. So uh, with that, is there anything else that we want to mention about Philadelphia regarding their acquisitions, their losses, anything else that I may have forgotten, fellas? All right. Hey, sounds good. <laughs> well, hey, thanks guys for tuning into this video. Let us know what you think in the comments below about Philadelphia and their future. And again, please be sure to consider subscribing. We'll see you next time on Winamac Hockey.